Now, I know some of you as uh, community activists, I know some of you as corporate lobbyists, um, I know some of you as in previous uh, legislative uh, roles, and I know none of you is a proud boy, and it, and it blows my mind that I have to worry about stuff like that here in Hawaii in this day and age. Um, I got kind of a, not a specific policy question, but a general question about how you think about things, and that's this. What is the post-pandemic new normal you'll be working toward? And this could be many years out. And especially, how is it different from the old normal? And if, I don't know whose turn it is to answer, but. Oh, Senator um, San Buenaventura. Okay. Thank you so much for that question, because um, the post-pandemic, at least immediate normal, will be a time of belt tightening and probably a lot of services that we had taken for granted uh, will not be, there are going to be, it, it's, it's going to be very painful. Um, I am hoping uh, with the new legislators in mind to move this administration towards a more liberal approach towards economic development as a new normal. It is, what, what I'm trying to say is this, I mean, um, Representative Branco took over Representative Thielen's um, position, but Representative Thielen was a shining light towards hemp production, and it is, I, I think that is one of the things we should look at. I mean, agriculture was a mainstay of the state of Hawaii before tourism and before the mil well, around the same time as the military. Okay, why can't we go towards that again? I mean, we are in the middle of the Pacific. We are close to the equator. We have a year round growing um, climate. It is we need to work towards administration because 2019, a more liberal hemp legislation bill got vetoed by the governor and any kind of liberalization of hemp. And, you know, the other states are producing CBD that we in the state of Hawaii are importing. It's ridiculous, okay? So that kind of liberalization. Other states are legalizing cannabis. We are the first state to legalize medical marijuana. Why were we one of the last ones to even have dispensaries? Okay, so we need to work on the administration for that because any kind of decrim, um, he had vetoed. Okay, so I'm hoping for new normal of a more liberal in terms of economic development because focusing solely on military and tourism has gotten us to where we are right now. And that's what I'll be, I'll be working on. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Okay, next is Representative Sayama for Doug's question. I'm sorry, Doug. I'm sorry, Doug, can you please repeat the question? Yeah, sure. Um, it's a conceptual one. What is the post-pandemic new normal that you'll be working toward? And especially how is it different from the old normal? Well, one of my main focus is actually in public education and with so many uh, classrooms moving to the digital side, I, I'm really hoping that uh, teachers and the curriculum will shift more towards uh, focusing on how students can uh, develop, you know, uh, programming, uh, digital coding, because those are the skills that we need for the jobs of this next generation. Um, we really need to prepare uh, our children to be uh, ready. Uh, to take these uh, high paying, high technology jobs. And not only will this help the next generation, but it would also help, you know, uh, the Kupuna in our district to connect, able for their children, their grandchildren to be uh, computer literate. And then the, their children could teach them, you know, how they could access services uh, online, whether that be telehealth or other services. Um, but beyond education, I completely agree that we need, really need to look for creative avenues and in industries to diversify Hawaii's economy. Uh, and that may be, uh, for my instance, I like to look overseas. Uh, as my education was in both Japan and China, I think there are many opportunities that Hawaii can leverage and position itself to take those 
advantage of those opportunities and bring uh, great jobs and opportunities back to Hawaii. Uh, so as a legislator, I hope to look to creative solutions to really uh, ensure the next generation of Hawaii residents are prepared for a more global economy. Thank you very much. All right, Representative Tam, your response, please. Uh, thank you, Doug, for that personal shout out. Um, and, um, you know, Senator San Buenaventura basically took the words right out of my mouth. We really need to diversify our economy. We got into this mess because we kind of really depended on tourism and construction and military to kind of hold our economy. And that's not enough. I always viewed our economy as a three-legged bar stool. And when you take one of those bar stool legs away, that no longer becomes a stool. So I'm hoping that this upcoming year, we have like the political willpower to change or to get the ball rolling on diversifying our economy. Um, one of the plans that I'm thinking about is green technology. I'm hoping that we could develop a program within the University of Hawaii to research this green technology into um, solar, to smart grids, to green infrastructure, and make that research and results available for free for any kind of business or entity that wants to use it, as long as they A, operate out of Hawaii, and B, hire a quota of the local workforce. It creates jobs. It basically helps us meet our clean energy goals, and it develops a new economy that is more sustainable than what we have right now. One of the things that I hate hearing all the time is, you know, it's always been done this way, why should we change? And I'm hoping that this pandemic opens a lot of people's eyes. And, you know, I hope that we no longer have that mindset going into the next session and the years ahead, because this problem is going to linger until for 10 years down the line, in my opinion. Thank you, Representative Tam. All right, Representative Branko, you're next. Thank you for the question. Um, so how I envision Hawaii is Hawaii has many competitive advantages, right? Our unique location, our unique climate, and we have a lot of opportunities here in green energy. And so those are the types of fields that I would like to expand into. Um, for example, the city of Phoenix, when they were actually trying to attract more businesses to Phoenix, what they did was they actually fully funded the University of Arizona's research department to allow professors to actually um, have more patents. A patent costs about $50,000. And so that's one of the ways that we need to actually set up a base that allows for businesses, allows for outside information to come in, but also use our technology, our information here. We have a fantastic research university here at the University of Hawaii. So that's one way we can expand. Um, I'm actually reading a book right now, uh, Singapore and Swi Switzerland Secrets to Small State Success. So I think it's also important that we look to outside models. Our Ali'i understood that, right? King Kalakawa understood the importance of electricity. Iolani Palace electrified before the White House, Buckingham Palace, right? We have a history of looking outside, looking at technology and bringing it home and making it uniquely Hawaiian. And so that's what I want to work in the state legislature is how can we expand on green energy, expand our economy, to expand our tax base, to make sure our local families are getting the best jobs and being able to stay. Mahalo. Thank you very much. All right, Representative Ganadin, you're next. Doug, I love your question because um, we get to think about ideas. Um, so uh, as I mentioned earlier, I think closing the digital divide is going to be important um, in making, in creating economic security in the future. So um, we all know that now we can work from anywhere. So that means we can introduce business and capacity building here on the islands if we have an equitable internet access. Um, in District 30, um, people didn't have the opportunity to um, to work from home. You know, a lot of folks in, um, in services, they use their bodies. They have to go um, clean rooms, take care of facilities, take care of human beings. That's the kind of work that can't be outsourced. Um, and I don't see a lot of that changing in the next few years in District 30. Um, I have the opportunity of representing Lower Kalihi, Halava, as well as Pearl Harbor. Um, that is the military and the tourism industry. Um, and it's an urban environment. Um, I support my colleagues' concern in diversifying the economy, and we're going to be doing that in the next few years. But 
as we do that, I'd also like to think about um, what's going to be happening right there in the district. Uh, we have 16 acres of the Oahu Community Correctional Center. That is a jail that will be replaced, ideally, with affordable housing. I think that needs to be a community-led discussion. Um, and, you know, you folks are the Kokua Council, working with largely elderly folks. But um, this is an opportunity to take the lead of the young. 10,000 people showed up in July to advocate for um, racial and economic justice right there at the legislature and internationally and nationally talking about this. Ending mass incarceration, putting that money towards healthcare, towards the things that actually make us safe. Um, so this is the year I'm hoping we end the contract with private prisons and talk about what actually makes communities safe, which is um, um, healthcare facilities, which is uh, direct services to youth, the kind of thing that I was doing. Um, I'd also like to talk about ending um, loopholes that ship a lot of the income that is made by the folks in my community overseas. So um, the majority of the hotels are owned by multinational corporations. I don't think that the sweat off the backs of people in Kalihi should be paying for the people like, um, like Paris Hilton and uh, Eric Trump. Um, and in the future, um, we're gonna have to worry about how to um, get direct ownership of our primary economic driver, which is tourism, back in the hands of our local community. Thank you very much. All right, Representative Capella, you're next. Yay. Thank you so much, Doug, for that question. I'm so excited that it's once again finally my turn. <laughs> it still feels like it's getting longer. <laughs> um, you know, I think this is such a wonderful question because the reality is COVID has been so terrible for so many people in every community across our state and across our country. But it's also given us this incredible opportunity to shine a light on some of the things that have been the most pressing in, in our state and in our country. Uh, I think the reality is that normal wasn't working and the new normal, we can't have a new normal because normal indicates that you have to be able to just be stuck and this is what it is, and this is what it's going to be, and this is what it's going to be forever. And I don't think normal is a good thing. We always have to have a society that's continuing to move forward and doing something else and growing. And for me, I ran for office because I want to push a very progressive agenda that puts people first. I think the reality is that our economy wasn't working and it's not working still. And we have to move away from tourism. We are in one of the most incredible spaces to push clean energy and to create a green new deal. We have to invest in, in clean energy and good paying green jobs. We need to diversify our economy through sustainable agriculture um, and to protect our INA from commodification for every single generation to come. We also need to make sure that because we're in the middle of a pandemic, it shine the spotlight on some of the most pressing and challenging issues our state has faced for generations. And that's not new. It's just really brought it to the surface. Now more than ever, I think people deserve a living wage of at least $17 an hour so that people are kupuna, so that people can afford to live here in Hawaii, so that young people like myself don't have to move away, so that our kupuna have the opportunity to retire when they are ready to retire um, and aren't forced to keep working. We don't need to make, we have to make sure that people are not struggling to meet ends meet even when we're not in a crisis. And I think we also need, I've talked about this earlier, but we need things like paid sick and family leave so that people don't have to choose between putting food on the table, putting gas in their car or, or, or caring for their loved ones. Um, and then at the end of the day, we also need to make sure that we're building better schools so that our keiki can become the medical innovators that prevent future pandemics from ever infecting our shores. We as a, as a community and we as a state have every single opportunity to create something new and, and wonderful because an economics of austerity is not working. What we had before was not working. Um, so we need to make sure that we're really focusing on the cares-based economy that we've been given the opportunity to create. Um, so I look forward to really pushing that agenda and, and fighting for everyday working people. Thank you very much. Senator Michelle Lucha, Lucha you're next, please. Okay, thank you. I commend my colleagues for their wonderful and novel ideas, and I know armed with good intentions, all of them will work towards uh, getting those um, initiatives uh, implemented. Um, I, I have been pondering about this question, Doug, this issue for uh, quite some time. In fact, I started to 
you know, think that uh, it's not necessarily uh, government that has all the answers, albeit, again, you know, government can continue to uh, towards its, its approach of, of developing programs and initiatives that would help our uh, constituents. But at the same time, I thought that it would be also important to have it be community driven. And that's why, you know, um, we thought about having a resilience um, summit sometime in December. And why resilience? Because it's a value that really talks about bouncing back. But it's not even just bouncing back, it's bouncing forward because you're right. At the end of the day, you know, what can we change? Because now in the context of COVID, this is an opportunity because as you know, the Chinese character for crisis is also opportunity. So having said that, it's wonderful that um, um, in one of those, uh, you know, the universe provides moment. Um, there's an opportunity to uh, partner for Senate District uh, 16 to partner with Hawaii Institute for Public Affairs, which actually has a funding to do a Hawaii 2.0, a reset. And so hopefully um, things are in play right now. I can't reveal too much because there's still, um, you know, uh, details that need to be forged. But at the end of the day, what we'd like to do is have Senate District 16 be maybe the model, the pilot that would, we have such a vibrant community and this community can roll up its sleeves and come up with a plan to bounce back and think of it from a different vantage point, including education, what would education be look like? How can resilience be uh, you know, taught in schools as a value? How do we make sure that even on our Kupuna issue, how do we make sure we address their needs in the context of COVID? Because somebody said this might be a, an, a, a situation that can be for 10 years, who knows? But we need to arm ourselves and it has to be an integrated approach. It has to be an, uh, a, a community driven approach so that in the end, because the community is invested, they also would have every um, opportunity and objective to make it succeed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now at this time I'd like to introduce a few of our community